Welcome back. The Department of Trade and Industry and the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission say they'll be launching an investigation into Steinhoff to determine if it's breached the Companies Act. In a statement, the DTI says it will further suggest that the Independent Regulatory Board for Auditors also considers the circumstances with regard to the role of auditors in this instance. Steinhoff has been rocked by an accounting scandal that has wiped millions of rands from its market value. Parliament's uh, in Oversight Committee on Public Accounts, SCOPA, has also announced it intends to call the executives of the global retailer before Parliament early in the new year. Parliament is currently on recess, but SCOPA's chairperson, Temba Gordy, has also called on the SA Revenue Service, the South African Reserve Bank, the Independent Regulatory Body for Auditors, as well as the Financial Services Board to urgently investigate Steinhoff. Shares in the company fell by 80% last week after the company said accounting regularities had come to light. It announced the resignation of its CEO and postponed the release of financial results. The share price started to recover yesterday after 200 billion rand was wiped off the market value of the company. Well, the Federation of Unions of South Africa, FEDUSA, has assured its members and pensioners that their funds are fully protected. FEDUSA and its affiliates met with the Public Investment Corporation yesterday. They discussed the alleged massive corruption, fraud and gross negligence concerning accounting irregularities at Steinhoff. Earlier we spoke to FEDUSA's General Secretary, Dennis George. We started by asking him about the meeting he had with the PIC yesterday. We've called an urgent meeting with the PIC to discuss, you know, the magnitude of this first, and then secondly, what steps we will, will a producer take, you know, to try to uh, uh, work together with the other social partners mm -hmm. to deal with this particular scourge of, of corruption uh, in the private sector, and 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 to also look at, you know, what could be the potential impact on jobs because this particular company employ about 120,000. Uh, workers across a number of jurisdictions, mm -hmm. including the main listing is in Frankfurt, and then the secondary listing is in Johannesburg. Mm. So you're dealing with a lot of tax regimes, you're dealing with a lot of different legislation, but at least there's one accounting standard that we all have to work according to. Yes. And um, the conclusion of the meeting concluded first of all to, to, to say that we don't understand why would the CEO resign Mm -hmm. but the chief financial officer stays there mm -hmm. and the chairperson is still there because those are the three people that actually work very closely together mm -hmm. and then you have your audit committee you have your risk committee you have all these committees that are supposed to be accountable and then the company decided very strangely that they want to be the judge in their own case mm. so they appointed uh, um, price water coopers to do an investigation because Deloitte refused to sign the audited financial statements, mm -hmm. which gave rise to the fact that the CEO resigned. So FEDUSA believe, and the PIC support our view, that there must be a total independent mm -hmm. investigation, because nobody can be a judge in his own case. Secondly, we also think it is very critical, and um, we have sent an email this morning to Europe, to our International Trade Union Confederation, where we've asked them to be and get in contact with the tax authorities in Germany mm -hmm. to see if they can't speed up the process of this investigation that started in 2015 mm -hmm. to at least if they can bring a preliminary report out, you know, because it's critical that we need to look after the jobs of people because more uncertainty there is, you know, the more risk we bring about for the jobs to be lost. Um, and, and then we look at also at the impact. Now, um, the strategy of the PIC, you know, um, was quite useful in this case because it builds on the principle that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So about 1% of the assets of the PIC has been exposed. Only 1%? Yes, we're talking about between 10 and 15 billion. Mm -hmm. And we remember we also talk about value of a share, you know. And that's the reason why we feel comfortable, at least that the exposure wasn't too big. And then we look at another aspect, and that is the situation of our members mm -hmm. and how the pension fund that they are receiving. And I'm just glad to announce to everybody to remain calm because the government employees belong 
to a defined benefit fund. What does this that mean? <laughs> straightforward English is when you join the pension fund, it's according to the rules. Mm -hmm. So they might say, look, when you go on retirement after 25 years of service, you'll get 60% or 70% from your final year salary. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a third that you can take in terms of, you know, your, your cash amount. Mm -hmm. so, so, so our members are totally protected. Mm -hmm. It's the people that have a defined contribution. Mm -hmm. that is exposed to the market. So mm -hmm. if a person wants to go on retirement and the, the fund took a knock now, then your pension fund would be less. Mm -hmm. um, but more important for us that the PIC is a long-term investor, you know, and, 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 and we feel it is totally unnecessary mm -hmm. for CEOs to behave so un un unethically, you know, and we don't know what is the motivation for that. So are you then suggesting that more people should be held accountable for this mess? Of course, look, remember a company, it's an organization with structures, with various committees. And therefore, you know, a person, that's the reason why you have a company, so that it's not a one-man show. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you can't, the company can't decide who's guilty and who's not guilty and decide the terms of reference for the investigation, mm -hmm. because there's public money involved. And secondly, FEDUSA have also started to consult with our attorneys. Mm -hmm. And, yes? And, and our attorneys, and what we want to start filing with the high court in South Africa is we want to have number one the CEO because he admitted in the email to his colleagues that he made the biggest mistake and we want him to be declared a delinquent director mm -hmm. and then we want to go after the other directors one by one and that decla declaration of a delinquent director has serious consequences for an individual. Very fancy words are being utilized, accounting irregularities, uh, some would even call it white collar crime, so it sounds very good. But is this just pure theft or corruption? Uh, corruption is theft. And I can give you an example. In the United States, Mr. Murdoff was also the darling of the investment community and he could charm investors about everything. Mm -hmm. And he did similar kind of things where they undervalue certain assets and mislead people deliberately because if you mislead people intentionally mm -hmm. you know you're committing a serious crime and that person is currently serving a hundred years in prison mm -hmm. so severely to the uh, the u.s jurisdiction system take these things and and for us in south africa i think we need to jack up our game because when you want to deal with 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 with, with um, capitalism you want to deal with markets you need to have solid uh, institutions and, and, and we must strengthen the, uh, our institutions to mm -hmm. prosecute these people. Now we are conducting a poll today and, and, and we want to find out from people, are people more concerned about uh, public sector corruption or corporate corruption and so far you can see the numbers there, 187 are coming in and 69% of people are saying that we are more concerned about public sector corruption than private sector. Is that perhaps a focus that need to shift you think? Mr. No, look, I think we must tackle corruption when it takes place in the private sector or when it mm -hmm. takes place in the public sector mm. but what makes the, the the corruption in the private sector so more severe it makes our country so more unequal society mm -hmm. because the management on the top they want to take huge amounts of salary out of the company and then they want to suppress wages for other people and that's what creating this unequal society and then they are very fast on the trigger the minute when the company doesn't perform well they want to start to retrench workers mm -hmm. and some companies are also not like they have i don't care attitude they don't want to give young people opportunity to do a learnership they don't want to take on apprenticeships it's always the situation is bad and the point is basically this this thing of greed especially mm -hmm. corporate greed we must deal with it